Welcome to the first 2016 episode of Pure Heiser Productions. I'm your host, Pablo Stubstad, and with me today I've got, once again, Nico LaCastro. Nico, why don't you tell me a little about the tournament we're going to look at today, as well as the rest of your Fly Life Winter Series. Okay, well the first tournament stop in the Fly Life Winter Series is at Buckingham Golf Course. Uh, this was a newly developed course that Andrew Burby helped develop over the last year and it's got some great views and it's a really amazing course. Uh, it plays around a dried up lake that actually finally got filled up with water, so it's nice to see some water in there for a change. That's true, and this course, unlike most courses in California at least, has multiple tee pads, so you can make it a very different round if you go out there for a casual round playing from the blue tees or the red tees. The course can be anywhere from par 58 to par 62. And today we're gonna see mostly the short tees because this is a winter event, daylight hours were limited. The um, course has a nice mix though. There's uh, 200 foot holes ranging all the way up to 700 or 800 foot holes. Some par fours out there as well. So uh, it's got a good flow and it's got a good mix. And I think uh, Burby did a really good job on the course design. Absolutely, he did. And today what we're gonna see is mostly the short tees, like I said, but we're gonna see the long tees on holes one and 18. And even from the short tees, I mean, there is a par five and there are three par fours that we're gonna see today. So the course is par 59. Let's get into it. It's a fun one to watch. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Here we go, Buckingham Open. Final round, lead card. First place, we've got Nico LaCastro, sitting at 12 down, rating at 1036 from Grass Valley, California. Second place, Chris Adiago, 9 under from San Juan, California, rating 987. Third place, Dallas Albright at 8 under, rating a 990 from Ukiah, California. Fourth spot, Scott Kyle from Potter Valley, California, 8 under, rating 978. So Scott is actually tied for third with Dallas. They're both 8 under. Oh, okay. Hole one here from the long tee is a par four, a short par four at 564 feet. Bit of a challenging green though. And that cart path there you see in front of the basket is OB, correct? Yes. And he goes up first. It was a little bit windy. I was just trying to leave myself a good position on the second shot. It's my first shot of the day. No warm ups. I was happy with that one. Yep. All you want is a good angle for an upshot at this hole. Get there for your three. Chris Adiego. Adiego's got a good routine. Sticks to the game plan. He's got good power, too. Right in the middle. Dallas Albright seen him on PHP before. We saw him in PHP 7 at Lava Creek last year. Dallas takes more of the line drive and tails out a little at the end. Last but not least, Scott Kyle. Bro, it looks like I'm taking over on the card. Throws a stable disc, some Anheuser. It's out left like Dallas, but it's fine. See, if you're out left, you got a, kind of a cleaner upshot at it than if you're more to the right. Yeah, take that straight gap. I think Dallas was probably about 270 feet from there. Looked like there was mid range. Uh, just a little high right, clip some branches, but he's still got to look at a three. He's still on the green. Adiego had one of the nicest looking drives from the tee, but it's a bit more of a tricky upshot from there. Takes the forehand approach. He gets through. Close to the basket. I gave this one a pretty aggressive run. Got a decent kick towards the hole. It's got that hillside behind it, so I figured you could run it pretty hard. Yeah, nice and safe. And here's Scott for a birdie three. Four. 
easy putt for Chris. I think he might have rushed just yeah. a little bit. I think he went up to, to putt and then saw that you were out and kind of made a split-second decision to just go for it anyway and might not have been focused. And Nico gets the birdie there. And that just leaves Dallas and Scott to tap in their pars. It's a nice green. It helps to be in a good position on the drive on this particular hole. Two birdies and two pars. Hole two, the shortest hole at Buckingham, 167 feet. Got a few guardian trees up by the green. You gotta make sure you hit this first gap and then you can usually get a look. Green slightly sloping to the left. So you gotta try to play it on the right side of the hill. Clip some trees, but you've still got a putt. A Diego with a very colorful disc. Chris shoots it through the five hole. Right through the middle of that <laughs> V in the Manzanita. I look like Dallas was thinking about jump putting this hole. Such a short shot. Yeah, not only 160, but downhill as well. Scott puts it down there, nice and smooth. Nice spot. Thanks, Chris. Dallas just down to the left of the pin, just outside Circle's Edge, I'd guess. Just off the cage. Rolls away a little, but not too bad. Same thing for Nico. This hole may be short, but it is very protected. Scott with a nice birdie. Dallas gets the par. I don't think Dallas is going to miss too many more shorties. He's a good putter. Usually makes everything. Same with this guy, Adiago. Got a simple form. Very accurate. Smooth putting style. Couple birdies, couple pars, and that puts Scott one stroke ahead of Dallas now. Hole three from the short tee, 250 feet. The long tee on this one's a lot longer. It's a par four, way back into the left of this one. It's a fun shot because you have a lot of room on the left-hand side. Allows you to give it an aggressive run. And Nadia goes right there. Scott's floating one in there. He's flirting with the tree a little bit. Uh, that was a little high. It stays inside the <laughs> circle. Taking the sidearm here, trying to ring some chains. Yeah, that was a ace run. I was just stoked to be out there today. They were calling for rain all week, and then uh, the tournament started, and we got blessed with good weather with the disc golf guys. Yeah, beautiful day. A little overcast, not too much wind, no rain. Dallas with the long jumper, running putt. And here's Scott for a birdie. Oh. 
Easy no. birdie for Adiago. And Scott missed his third there. And Nico taps in an easy birdie. Remember after this whole, uh, Scott was telling me it was his first time playing with Nico and his first time being on camera. Might have been getting to him a little bit, but I think he'll loosen up. A couple birdies, a par and a bogey. Dallas and Scott are tied. First time I got to play with Scott Kyle and uh, he really got an arm on him and he's got some smooth shots as well. Hole four, 280 feet. It's a couple different options. You can take the, the left approach or the right approach. It's typically a sidearm if you go on the left-hand side. A little hill plays good. Ace run by Adiego right there. He almost put that one in. Taking a very similar line. Got the skip I was looking for. Yep, good shot. About 10 feet away. Dallas is going to do the backhand line around the right Looks side. Like Dallas taking the hyzer line. Playing the skip shot. Stop. <laughs> Looks good. He told it to stop, and it stopped. Perfect. Scott's going around the right side as well. Looks like Scott's taking the mid range. Yeah. Barely got off that cart path. And he's putting for two like everybody else. Yeah, it's not a very long hole, but we all made it look pretty easy. And Dallas makes good. Like a machine. And we've got a star frame. It's always nice. And the white baskets. Easy to see, definitely. Yeah, they're different. Look good. On to hole five, par three, 247. It's a fairly easy hyzer hole. You just gotta make sure you miss a couple trees at the end. And Chris is up first. Pulled a little bit right, but yeah. still gives a 30, decent 35 look footer, maybe. at the green. Yeah. Not too bad. I was looking for a skip as well, but sticky grass. Dallas goes with his Firebird playing the skip shot. Almost oh. gives it the one skip in. We've got ace runs on the last three holes in a row, I think. We're all starting to loosen up after the first round. <laughs> Scott hits the one big guardian stump and rolls about 20 feet back it's up the hill. Untypical backspin. Yeah. Heiser caught around that. He told me he could not see the basket from where he was. That was sick. We were all stoked for him. That was a really great putt. As you can see, enjoyed making the longest birdie on the card.
Chris is feeling his putt, though. Yeah, another solid putt from Chris. Nico peeking out from behind the tree. Everybody's doing it. I had to join the club. Birdie club. That's three out of four now. And Dallas ain't too far away. Boom. Two star frames in a row. He has an interesting style putt. You don't see many people that hold the disc like that, but it's very effective for him. And Usually smooth. Yeah. It's a similar putt to Adiego's, I think, actually. Dallas has a grip. He's got that thumb on top a little more than most people, yeah. but uh, it makes it work. Hole well, six, another par three, 292 feet. This one's the same from the red and blue tees, coincidentally. This is a pretty straightforward uphill shot, but one thing about this course is that ball golf greens are OB, and you're throwing over a ball golf green there at the, at the end before Chris the slope. took his mid-range there. It came up a little shorter than he wanted to, but... I go with the fairway driver. Just making sure I get over that green. is safe as well. Uh -huh. Nice little turnover shot from Scott. And everybody's putting. Now Diago probably just outside 30. Another good putt. Perfect. He literally comes out of the woodworks. Out of San Juan, haven't seen him, and he just comes out firing birdies. <laughs> Great confident putt from Dallas, as usual. Putt from Scotty. And just like that, three star frames in a row. Sounds refreshing to hear the chains before you go up into your putt. You thought it was only two in a row at the time, but it's actually, that's the third in a row. Triple star frame. As we move on to hole seven, this one's a par four, 715 feet. Funny that this one even has two tee pads because the long tee is probably about 30 feet longer than this tee. It's almost the same hole. Par four in either case, of course. There's not a bounce marker that goes down the left-hand side of the fairway. It's a lot better to be straight or even a little bit to the right. Yeah, because there is another fairway coming back on the other side of those trees on the left. Juan Diego turns his over a little too much. First round, he went far left and had a really great save for his three. And this time, I think he went opposite. Power in that one. <laughs> right where you want to be. Ripping something over hard. Next up, Dallas Albright. Yeah, he slipped a little bit there. Still worked out. Whatever, still. You put him in a good spot. This 
It's a nice hole to just let one unleash, and that's yeah, what you just seen right there. We got him all fired up talking about his wife calling shots. Right. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> right next to Nico's. That's pretty impressive for a random 970, 980 rated player to show up and drive as far as Nico LaCastro. Definitely got some power. He was giving me a run for sure. And Chris's second shot. Perfect. Chris has just got great accuracy, especially inside 400 feet. You really don't see him get offline too much. Dallas' second shot, a little bit wide there. Dallas has got good hyzer game. He's always just throwing that smooth hyzer. Goes back to his orange mid range disc. Yeah, nice upshot. I think it might be a buzz, I'm not sure. I throw my mid range as well. Come a little shorter than I was expecting, but not too far away. Yeah, right there by Scott. And here's Dallas with a long look at a three. He's lining up like he's running this one. Oh. He knew it was in the whole time. Right in the heart. May put that one in the red tape. Yeah, that's a good putt. Maybe about as far as Scott's on that other hole. Of course, Scott's was blind as well. But that is two incredible putts we've seen already by hole seven. That's just getting rid of the fear because there's a little hillside behind it. And if you miss the basket, you're probably going to get a roll away. Oh, yeah. He was really committed on that last putt. Nico gets the birdie three as well. Scott. Nice little tap in. And Adiego, despite having the worst first shot, had the best second shot and is basically parked for a three. Which. Good run of birdies going on right now. Makes this the fourth consecutive star frame. It's a legit par four, too. Oh, yeah. Over 700. 700 yeah. yeah. nice to play a course for a change that allows you to air the disc and really rip some shots. Well, this is an interesting hole here. Uh, 442 par 3, and this is actually the short tee. The long tee on this one is farther back and turns it into a par 4. But this is kind of a more interesting shot. Diego goes for the roller. I thought it was looking like it was going to turn up. It might have hit something on the ground. Yeah, I just didn't stand up. It's an unorthodox oh, roll. That's where my and, uh, shot he, he did stay safe over there. The uh, bunkers are all OB as well as the ball golf greens. And he was at least fortunate enough to not go in that bunker. Might have overcompensated a little bit from what I've seen. Made sure I got that one over, didn't you? Really ripped it to the right. I uh, wanted to make sure you didn't go way down there like he did. This was a hole I was really wanting to get a look at. I feel like it was in my wheelhouse, and I like throwing rollers. Yeah, it sets up nicely for a roller, I gotta agree. I went air shot the first round, came pin high. Dallas slipped a little again. So it's dirt tee areas, you never know. That rock is pretty funny right there with the target on yeah, it. Yeah, the target. Stay away from that target. It's oh, one target you don't want to hit. Dad? No. Can you imagine? <laughs> Probably roll into a bunker from there. <laughs> Anything can happen in this game. Great upshot from Scott after turning his drive over a little too much. And here's Chris down there. Barely caught this one. Parked for a par as well. Bravo. Hey. <laughs>
Well, this was one of the tougher par threes out there today for sure. It was just a long par three, not quite a par three and a half or a par four. Well, better for the long arms on that shot. Yeah. Doggy. I was just a little to the right. White baskets. I'd like to see more of those around the country. Yeah, they're they're real nice looking. And of course it helps that they're mock X's too. It's always nice to see a couple more of those going here and there. And after four star frames in a row, we have a par frame. Hole nine, short T, par three, 238. Nice little hyzer. I think it was a little bit longer than that, honestly. That's what it says on the maps. I think this one was more 300-ish. With how hard you guys are throwing, I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, because Nadiago went full power mid-range and only went about 30 deep. I actually took out my fairway driver. I was just making sure I got plenty of room to the right. No, it's going left. And that's parts. Hit the basket during the first round. <laughs> you just said, said, it, said it in the video too. Mr. Heiser game. He's playing the one, two, three skip. One, two, three. Skip in. That's a good line from Scotty. Oh, oh, yeah, Adiego, a little deep. Josh, you aced this shit? Yeah, I aced it with my enforcer. Sick. I guess someone else aced this hole in round one. Somebody else went yeah. full driver at it. There's a pretty. I think Scotty's adjusted to playing with Nico and with the camera by now. Basket's got a big target zone. Yeah, those mock X's really do. If you're on your putt, they start looking like a field goal. And Dallas with a drop in two, basically. Three birdies and a par, and Nico's got a three-stroke lead over Chris now. Dallas and Scott still tied for third. Hole 10, par 3, 276 feet. Again, there's that ball golf green that they're throwing right over, and beyond the basket is a cart path as well. through my stable mid-range grizzly at it. It's a new disc I've been working in my bag. That's pretty. Flies really nice. Yeah, that's it's right there. Yeah, this is an interesting shot with that low ceiling right out of the gate. Low ceiling again before the basket. Stop. Uh, Dallas went a little left there. A little too much hyzer on that one. Perfect. It's a fun hole. A little air bounce right out the gate. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice shot by Chris as well. As long as you make it over that hillside, have an easy putt. A long putt for Dallas. Yeah. There you go. Telling you, this guy can putt. Started turning it on after that first hole. Try not to ruin the star frame for you guys. You didn't want to ruin that for us? No. You three are pretty much all right there. Oh, 
Coming up on the double mando. There's another star frame, the fifth one for the round. Oh, this hole, 208 feet, double mando, pretty straightforward. It does have a separate blue tee, but it's not any longer than the red tee, it's just off to the side of it. it might even be a little shorter, which is weird, because the red tees are typically the short ones at this course. That'll work. I think we all should have ace ran this one. Yeah. Time. Almost pin high. <laughs> yeah, definitely in the circle. Oh, I did it again. No, I didn't. Safe. Right. <laughs> what am I doing on this hole, dude? Is this table. one on or over the path? Yeah, you can hear Nico asking there in the video. It was actually OB on or beyond the path on this one. Right so, here. Diego did make the double mando, but... He crossed the path and went OB on the other side. Yeah, we, so. we played a couple provisionals here just to make sure we're playing by the right rules. And At this end it's always a good thing if you have any questionable calls. Just play the provisional and figure it out afterwards. And it ended up being that one that counted because it was OB beyond the path. And that went beyond the path again. I know if Adiago got a right handful of shots, he never missed this one again. Yeah, just really a series of unfortunate events for him on this hole. So he's gone OB twice. Now he's putting for a five from here. That's frustrating. He's had so many great shots this round, and, and for it to kind of fall apart on the little 208-footer is, I think, unexpected for any player of this caliber. Somebody got a birdie, at least. It's funny how many star frames we've been seeing on holes that are really quite a bit harder than this one. This one gave the group some trouble. players on another fairway down there driving around in their golf carts. It's always fun to play around with golf carts. And that unfortunate six double P for Chris puts him down in a tie for third with Dallas and Scott is now in second place and taking the tee with that birdie as well. Hole 12, nice little shorty. Tell this guy's thrown some frisbees before. Just trying to keep it slow and smooth on these dirt run ups. Perfect. Too much power from Dallas, but should still Got be a little aggressive on the 220 foot hole. He went 215 feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that line at it. Just a sidearm hyzer. Yeah, that looked easy. Dallas with a little circle's edge putt. Let's go, Dallas. No problem. I don't think he's missed a putt since that first hole. Oh, he's done missing. Missing is in the past. Woo. 
Snuck it in there. Don't start doing that, he said. And Chris is part. We're cruising through the round at this point. That is the sixth star frame of the round. Which brings us to hole 13. This is the par 5, 945 feet. The long tee for this is 1,200 feet, still a par 5. Two mandos that force you to stay to the left of the other fairway on the right, and an OB pond right before the basket. This is an interesting one. is a completely legit par five if you take a four you're feeling good about it absolutely 945 seems a little short for a par five but those two mandos that force you to go way wide left around and back of the basket definitely make it a i got par the five. birdie during the first round this time i let it get away from me just a little bit trying to do too much could have laid it down the center OB. Yeah, that's OB over there past those blue stakes. Uh, that was the fairway for hole 7 over there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Dallas didn't quite get all the turn he was hoping for, but he's safe out there. Good looking line from Chris. That's what you want to do. That's what you want. That fat tree is the first Mando, and the little fuzzy tree is the second one. You can see the red arrow on it there by the golf carts. I think it's possible to three this one with a couple 500 foot drives. Maybe a roller on the second shot? Yeah. Might have to get creative. Roller around the pond. That's a good second shot by Dallas. Absolutely. Perfect. Playing some golf. <laughs> Looks like that one might have slipped out of his hand a little bit. Like a half layup. Yeah. That stayed safe at least. He was actually flirting with the OB over there. Diego with the roller and just like on hole 8 he didn't quite get it to stand up flirting with the OB but it is safe and here we see where Nico went out he's taking his relief marking his lie and he's going to be shooting for 3 from here I get the snap on that one to turn it over. And Scott's third shot. Trying to play it on the right hand side. Somehow it gets out there to the right. It gets through all those trees. Maybe a little too afraid of that OB pond. bit lower that could have been all right can be an intimidating green everybody's trying to make sure they stay wide of that pond and hitting oh, those trees. having a little bit of trouble I'm trying to make yeah. it there's a good upshot Diego, long look at a birdie. We need to get yeah. that one up another four feet. It's online, though. 
And Dallas right next to him. Go running jump man! Yes, <laughs> that was close. That was close. And Scott for a birdie off to the right. Oh. You Strong side spit out on Mach X. Couldn't really tell from this angle how strong side it was though, but it sounded pretty solid. And everybody's just tapping in their pars here. Nico with the OB stroke and everybody else pretty much screwing up their upshot and nobody gets a birdie. Everybody let one go there. Yeah. We all could afford it. Hole 14, par 3, 316. This one's about twice as long from the long tee. It's one of the par 4s if you play the blue tees. And there's OB just to the left of it. You can see the red stakes. It's a fun hole if you like throwing spike isers. Yeah. And Scott barely went OB there. Look at those mountains in the background. It's a beautiful course. Absolutely. Earlier that wind was pushing so hard. Looks like this one will be pretty close. Oh. Still in the circle. Didn't get much of a skip. Yeah, no skip at all. That just hit and sat. That's a good shot. Uh -huh. There it is. And here we see where Scott barely won OB. I remember the last time I went to the course, there was zero water. But That's crazy. Finally getting some rain out in Cali. Pretty big we body of water there. Oof. Scott almost saves his par. And Nico just outside the circle for a two. Perfect. Remember that being about 40 feet. It only looked like it was 20 feet on camera. <laughs> well, you stepped forward, so you must have been outside the circle. Definitely. Yeah, it's funny. Some angles really don't do certain putts justice. Alice drops another one for yeah. Bird. Chris with an untypical putt. I think after that double Mando hole where he took the six, he, he was having a little bit of a hard time getting mentally back in the game. And I think until that hole, he was still hoping to catch you, you know. Two birdies, a par, and a bogey. Coming down the stretch. Yep. Fifteen, two hundred and thirty-eight feet over OB, pretty much the whole way. I just go with a stable putter here. Make sure I don't get a crazy skip. not to putt on holes that are under 250 feet. Who doesn't? <laughs> Dallas, nice little spike hyzer, and he's right the, there too. Took the knife shot. Looks like everybody knows to play on this hole. Yeah. 
That's the way. Uh huh, uh huh, I like it. And Dallas, about 10 feet away, is out. Makes an easy tap in. And bring back some 90, 90s lingo. Everybody else is pretty much just dropping in birdies here. Gotta drop birdies from 238 feet. It's true. the seventh star frame. Pull 16, par 3, 390. Don't play a little further, I swear. Turned his over Taking too much. Taking the back door out. Got like a flare out that back side. I like your optimism. Fifty Mike. footer. He knows he can make it from fifty. Flip off. Late. Chris was having some trouble with his rollers this round. They all seem to either not stand up at all or like this one stand up too late. I think he might be learning some new disc. Good shot from Scott. Like, that's like the best shot of the group. Yeah. yeah. Gave it a try. He was on it right there. Yeah. Even from 50 feet, he is not afraid of it. Uh, Diego, this little touch sidearm up shot. Yeah. And he's there for a three. Good commitment on that. Right off the number plate. That would have been a good one to get. Nico taps in the three. Scotty makes the comebacker. There are really a lot of holes out here today where the whole card did the same. Either everybody birdied or everybody parred. And that is another par frame right there. Still anyone's game for second or third. Hole 17, another nice little shorty, 238 feet. There's some LB around the green as you can see those red stakes there. I go mid-range grizzly here. Yeah, you're liking that grizzly. Taking the hyzer route. It's kind of the smart thing to do. If you got a long sidearm, you could take that route. The hyzer works nice. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Off of the lock. 
just bounced off the pole perfectly and kept that hyzer line. Just this. That'd Good be shot. a pretty funny stamp, just putting a metal detector on your dish. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really good idea, by the way. Pretty funny. And Chris, after hitting the pole, there is out. Ooh. Part, Chris. I tried to spit out. It did try. It's in there. Stayed in, though. When it's in, it's in. Dallas taps in. Yeah. Doesn't matter how it goes in. All that matters, that it's in. Everybody knows it. Like that. Oh, let you guys Perfect example of a probe. A couple more tap ins right there. Yeah, yeah. Which makes the eighth star frame of the video. There's that grizzly. 24 under, 18 under, and two 17 unders with one hole to go. Hole 18, playing from the long tee, par 4, 714 feet. Pretty wide open. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's what I'm the most grateful for. Let's do this tomorrow, too. Yeah, hopefully. Thanks for patting in. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we're going to do. And Nico is first up. I like rollers. And this is a nice one. That's probably as good as last round, but it's pretty nice. Had a putt during the first round, had a long throw and a tint during the second round. Yeah. Dallas goes with the air shot. Fades out a little bit, but on a hole like this, you know, as long as you're out there. Chris still having that same problem with his roller. Could have slipped up a little bit on the tee pad, but it's really not as far as it looks on the upshot. Good looking roller from Scott. And I lost that one a little bit, but it comes back in frame right there. Too far from mine. Chris's second shot from off to the left. And that one came out a little early for him. Stayed off of the green at least. The ball golf green that is. Good second drive from Dallas. And here's Scotty, once again, not much farther away than Nico. That one went a little left on him. Nice. Still enjoying himself. Sometimes it's the best thing he does, laugh it off. Put yourself in a good mood for the yeah. next shot. That's a dirt to dirt moment right there. Yeah, and perfect layup for a tap in birdie. I was really hoping Chris threw this one in the chains. Ooh, right. Gave it a, oh, he did give it a chance. And Scott with a long look at a three. Not that long, I guess. Yeah! Sneaks it in there. Leaving the course with smiles. You need to get a little bit of luck, right? <laughs> Scraped her in there. He's a nice guy. It's nice playing with him. And Dallas for birdie. Yeah, nice play, Dallas. Makes good. Yeah. 
He really did not miss very many putts that round. No, I was just going to say that he put it together after the first hole. And Adiego saves the par. And here is Nico for the win. The win, first sanctioned tournament of 2016, Buckingham Open. Thank you, Andrew Burby, for making it happen, building the course, and helping run the first smooth tournament. Buckingham is the first Fly Life Winter Series event of five. And, and you'll get to see more coming up stay soon. Stay tuned for the rest of them on Pure Heiser Productions. Here we see the final results. Nico wins with 25 under, Dallas in second, Scott in third, and Chris in fourth. Here we see the PDGA results. Nico's rounds were 1041 and 1042 rated, both above his rating. Solid golf out there. And uh, great playing from all four of the players. Well, we just watched the first Fly Life Winter Series event, the Buckingham Open, out in Lakeport, California. And uh, I liked the course, had an enjoyable round with a, with a good group of competitors and uh, knocked out the first tournament of the year. Definitely, it was crazy to see how many star frames happened during that round too. Eight star frames, almost half wow. the course. And stay tuned for the next event, which is the Sunrise Open, which actually took place the day after Buckingham that we just watched. Uh, editing is in production for that right now, so expect that one soon. After that, we've got Kelly Ridge, which is another ball golf course. That's this coming Sunday, January 24th, and then we'll have two more Winter Series in February, which will be February 20, 20th and 21st. 20th is going to be the second annual Paradise Season Opener and the 21st is going to be the, what did I call it? The, the Browns Brown, Valley Throwdown. I call it the Brown Grizzly Open. That's what you're calling yeah, it now. Last Brown year, Grizzly Open. Last year it was the Browns Valley Throwdown. Actually if you want to see videos from either of those courses, Lava Creek was PHP number seven last year and the Browns Valley Throwdown was PHP 9A and 9B for both courses at at Brown's I call Valley it the Brown there. Grizzly Fly Life Winter Series Finale is the actual name used That's, in the tournament. I just came up with it a couple days ago. It's going to be the one this year. Yeah, recently. Well, with that, we'll go take a look at some of the highlights from this first round at Buckingham. And don't forget to subscribe to Pure Heiser Productions and stay tuned for the rest of the Fly Life Winter Series. Thank you. And thanks, Nico, Cheers. for coming on as my guest commentator always, yet again. Always a pleasure. All right. Thank you, guys. Let's do it. All right. Chris Adiago, ready to launch off, starting round two, with a powerful drive down the middle. Plays it on a direct line towards the basket. It's not messing around. That is just perfectly in line with it. Leaves him a nice little 100 foot up shot. For a probably a 450 foot crush. Yep. And Nico's drive on hole three. Sidearm Heiser. Really going for the ace run. Hoping to hear some chains. Maybe next oh, time. Right in front of it. Gotta start aiming at that red in the basket. Not just around the white basket. Into the basket. Which must be what Adiego was thinking on this shot. Because here is another ace sure run. It looked like he was going to make it. Where's the ching? That one was just right behind. We'll start catching some chain music in the rest of the Winter Series events. You're going to catch something. Next up, Dallas's drive on hole five. Dallas Albright, a.k.a. Mr. Heiser. Plays the Firebird skip shot off to the right. I don't know if anyone else has ever called him Mr. Heiser, but he's got the Heiser game figured out. And that one was pretty close to skipping in. And here is Scott Kyle on the same hole, hole five. Scott with a blind hyzer putt around the tree he had to walk out left hand side just to admire the perfect putt. Right in the heart. He's stoked. Jogging it out. You can turn around and smile for the camera, I'd imagine. 
Oh yeah. Gotta capture that emotional oh, reaction. Yeah. That's exciting. His first time on film, he hits the biggest putt of the round. Best putt of the day. Chris Adiego, just outside the circle on hole six. Chris just got a smooth, good looking putt. Heard that from a lot of people. And you got to see firsthand today that he knows how to make them. He's been playing a long time. He uh, grew up playing around Grass Valley and Penn Valley and some nice courses help shape up your game. He was feeling good out there. A spirited game right there. And next up, Nico's and Scott's drives on hole seven, the second par four of the round. Got to feel pretty good for Scotty to be able to hang with Nico LaCastro here and get a drive out there pretty much as far as Nico, maybe a few feet shorter. He did pretty throw. Close. He did throw this next shot close. before you, so I guess he was a little out, but that was just about as much power as, as your shot. Chris Adiego on the same hole. After a not too great first shot, he nails the second shot. You can just tell from this angle it's going to skip perfectly. Closer to the pin than anybody else after their second, even though he was in the worst spot. Park job for a birdie three. Dallas. Big putt for a birdie making three. Making it happen from about 55 or 60 feet. No jump needed. Perfect. And that putt right there was to secure the fourth consecutive star frame. Next up, Dallas on hole nine. Wide hyzer out to the right, playing for the skip. Plenty of hyzer. Couple of skips and a roll, and a park job. And Dallas again, getting a lot of love on the highlight reel. Another putt, he's just got that pop on his putt. Pops him into the center of the chains. His putt looks easy too. Yeah, very Kinda effortless. Aim and fire. And Nico putting for a two on hole 14. You can say that I like jump putting from about 40 feet. That one was nice and low, strong side. Definitely sticking. And Chris Adiego driving on hole 17. See that Adiago has a very natural frisbee throw. Makes it look easy. And we gotta see this one again, of course. Nico's roller on hole 18. And that must be a very understable disc, because you practically released that with Heiser. Yeah, you can say that. Stands up, curls right coming back to park this all next year get that eagle and that drive right there put him probably about 100 feet away An easy layup for a birdie three to finish scott had a great drive on this hole his upshot went a little left i remember playing this course at the Sneaks norcal there, championships right? and uh, got talking with andrew burby about putting together a tournament and uh Really just got committed to this Fly Life Winter Series, and this was the first stop. I'd say it's been a success so far. Had a lot of people come out to support the events and get some practice early in the season as well. Yeah, definitely. I think this time of year, a lot of people are kind of starved for some disc golf because it is the off season. Smart idea to run a winter series like this. Yeah, we dodged out on the rain at the first event. And we caught a little bit of it at sunrise yeah, we'll see that in the next pure hyzer productions episode and with that we'll move on to the award ceremony okay we, we got a tie for seventh place in the open division between it looks like ian owen and mark Split this. Alright. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was a hundred yards. That was a pick. 
Uh, they call it the All right, and uh, six players. They're called PI? Oh. They really pushed off of them. No, stop it. No. Oh, oh, no. Ryan, to create that they distance. They were both pushing. No. They were both. Ryan. You're going to call it. This is the playoff. This is the most recent. All right, fifth place we go. Isaac Lockwood. All the way to Freddy. Let's give it a Fourth place, and I got the honor of playing with Chris Adiego. He took off, but I'm going to see him tomorrow over at Sunrise. Chris Adiego. Oh, hey. All right, and in third place, we got Scott Kyle. Yes! <laughs> All right, taking second place. This guy was making some huge putts out there. Dallas Albright. Good job putting it together. Are you call yourself out or you want Scott, to get out of Where's Scott at? Mr. Feller, great player. Feller. Can't really get any strokes on him. <laughs> Chris left. He, he probably could have won. Oh, yeah. Other than him, could have six. But we're too much. Mother shit. <laughs> Woo! Last but not least, first place open, Nico Castro. Yeah.